Hello friends, welcome back to my channel Geography with Joy. This is Sufa Lakshmi and we are discussing about natural vegetation. In my previous class, we had discussed about importance of forest and types of vegetation. In today's class, we will concentrate on distribution and correlation of trees with the environment and forest conservation and we will complete the chapter. Please don't forget to subscribe, like and share my video with your friends. It will help me to give you a better service. Then, without much delay, let's start the class. Correlation of the forest with the environment. Forests have an intricate interrelationship with the environment. Forests play a vital role in protecting the environment by performing the following functions. Forests are the moderators of climate. They play an effective role in controlling humidity, temperature and precipitation. They play dominant role in carbon cycle. They absorb atmospheric carbon dioxide and help in maintaining the purity of air and controlling atmospheric pollution. Forests help in controlling soil erosion, soil degradation and floods. Forests help in water percolation and thereby maintain underground water table. Decay of plant leaves provides humus to the soil and increases their fertility. Look at this picture. A healthy forest. They are absorbing carbon dioxide and giving us pure air. They are controlling humidity, temperature, precipitation. They are controlling soil erosion. They are giving humus to the soil and increasing the fertility. They are also maintaining the underground water table. Such an important role they are playing in controlling the environment. They are so precious. But these forest resources of India are facing a serious threat from her own people because people have been over exploiting the forest to satisfy not only their need but also their greed. This has led to a decline in the forest cover. Now what are the causes of shrinkage of forest cover? Let's have a look. Growth in population which has led to increased demand for agricultural land, establishment of industries and new townships, overgrazing, deforestation. Large multipurpose projects have been established by evacuating forest land, increased demand for forest products, human activities like mining, quarrying and building growth of urbanization and many more. This all have led to a decline in the forest cover, which is a serious threat to the environment. Look at the deforested land. See the plight of deforestation. People have chopped up the trees to get the wood and other forest products. Is it good? These are the logs of wood. People have collected by cutting down trees from the forest for different purposes. Quarrying is going on here. Have a look. A large area is being evacuated to run the activity. Where are the trees? This is mining going on here. Can you see any tree to a great distance? These are precious and semi-precious stones which are being mined from the interior of the earth. These are beautiful but at the cost of our environment. This is a scene of overgrazing. No trees or plants are to be seen and the land is becoming a barren land. 
Now, what are the consequences of this decline in the forest cover? Let's have a look. Decline in the forest productivity, absence of forest cover leads to soil erosion, which increases loads of the rivers and rivers get silted. This siltation causes floods, which destroy property, crops and living beings. Lack of forest cover reduces precipitation, thus causing droughts. Deforestation increases the greenhouse effect in the atmosphere, leading to global warming and its harmful consequences. Hence, conservation of forest is of vital importance for the survival and the prosperity of humankind. This is a picture of siltation on river because of soil erosion that excess soil is getting accumulated on the river bed and river becomes shallow. So it cannot carry the excess water and hence overflows and inundates the surrounding area causing floods. And this is the consequence. Flood. Everything is submerged under water, destroying the lives, property, crops, valuable resources, and many more. This is an another threat to the environment, a drought. Can you see? A large area of land bearing crops is going to be destroyed because of lack of rainwater. All the efforts of the farmers went in vain. It's a huge loss. So, what are the precautionary measures to be taken to arrest these problems? To arrest deforestation and revitalize our forest cover, the following conservation practices must be undertaken. And what are those? Let's have a look. Increase the area under forest. Stop indiscriminate felling of trees. Use alternate source of energy. In many parts of the world, including India, trees are felled for providing firewood. So, in order to conserve forest, we must use non-conventional or renewable sources of energy like solar energy, tidal energy, hydro energy, etc. Next, proper legislation and its implementation. Strict laws should be made to check deforestation. Proper care should be taken to see that these laws are strictly implemented. Next, people's participation should be encouraged. Afforestation around the industrial units as Trees purify the air and absorb the carbon dioxide. People should be encouraged to participate in Van Mahutsa. Planting trees along the roads, railway lines, rivers and canal banks, etc. This is a picture of afforestation. Now what is afforestation? The scheme of plantation of new forest is called afforestation. Under the Van Mahutsab movement, thousands of trees have been planted along the roads, railway lines and hill slopes. Then what is reafforestation? The restoration of forest wherever they have been indiscriminately cut is called reafforestation. In this scheme, two saplings are planted to replace one. Hugging the trees symbolizes save the trees. Trees are our life. This is the picture of Chipko movement. Do you know what is this? Chipko movement was started in 1970s. It was a non-violent movement aimed at protection and conservation of trees and forests from being destroyed. The name of the Chipko movement 
originated from the word embrace as the villagers used to hug the trees and protect them from woodcutters from cutting down. There was a historical incident related to this cutting down of trees I would like to share with you. In 1731, the king of Jodhpur in Rajasthan asked one of his ministers to arrange wood for constructing a new palace. The minister and workers went to a forest near a village inhabited by Visnois to cut down trees. A Visnoi woman, Amrita Devi, showed exemplary courage by hugging a tree and daring king's man to cut her first before cutting the trees. The tree mattered much more to her than her own life. But sadly, the king's man didn't listen to her pleas and cut down the tree along with Amrita Devi. Her three daughters and hundreds of other Bisnois followed her and thus lost their lives saving trees. The incident inspired the several rural women who launched such similar movements in different parts of India. The Chipku movement gained momentum under Sundarlal Bahuguna, an activist who spent his whole life persuading and educating the villagers to protest against destruction of the forest and the Himalayan mountains by the government. The Chipko protest achieved a major victory in 1980s with a 15 years ban on tree felling in the Himalayan forest of the state by the orders of Mrs. Indira Gandhi, the then Prime Minister. This is one of the pictures of Van Mahutsa. Van Mahutsav is an annual tree planting festival in India, celebrated in the first week of July. This movement was initiated in the year 1950 by India's then Union Minister for Agriculture, Dr. K. M. Munshi. The aim of this festival is to create awareness regarding the importance and preservation of the forest. People celebrate Van Mahutsav by planting trees or saplings in homes offices, schools, colleges, and thus called as afforestation. Now, let's have a look at National Forest Policy of India. The Government of India adopted a forest policy in 1952, which was further modified in 1988. This policy lays emphasis on sustainable forest management in order to conserve and expand forest reserves and to meet the needs of the local people. Based on the conservation policy, the government has initiated the following measures. Afforestation, reafforestation, social forestry and agroforestry. About afforestation and reafforestation, I have already told you. Now let's discuss about social forestry and agroforestry. Social forestry. It refers to the management and protection of forest and afforestation on viral lands. Let's have a look at the objectives. To provide employment opportunity to rural people. To develop local cottage industry by providing raw materials. To provide fever loot, fodder for cattle, timber and minor forest products to rural people. To utilize the available land according to its productive capacity. To provide efficient conservation of soil and water. To increase agricultural production by using cow dung as manure. To fulfill the recreational needs of the people. To improve the aesthetic scene of the area. And to achieve all-round rural development as a part of integrated rural development program. This is called social forestry. Have a look. How green this area is. Giving fresh air, creating an aesthetic scene, a recreational area along with all other benefits. Isn't it rejuvenating? Now, Let's talk about agroforestry. 
it aims to provide conservation of land and its improvement in order to achieve a combined produce of forest and agricultural crops. A narrow definition of agroforestry is trees on farms. Now what are the objectives? Let's have a look. To reduce pressure on natural forest, to check soil erosion, to maintain the natural fertility of the soil, to maintain ecological balance, to make the best use of all the available resources to obtain a variety of forest products. This is agroforestry. This intentional combination of agriculture and forestry has varied benefits, including increased biodiversity and reduced erosion. This is the end of part two. Now let's have a look at some probable questions which are going to come. There are so many questions which are repeatedly coming in exams. I'm going to help and provide you with those in my coming classes. For today, as a sample, I am giving few more questions here which had come previously in different years. Just have a look. First, what is commercially the most important natural belt in India? In what rainfall range is it located? It has come in 2014. State two reasons why tropical evergreen forests are difficult to exploit had come in 2015. State the characteristic features of vegetation found in tropical deserts. Give an example of desert vegetation and state its uses. It had come in 2014. Give three reasons for the depletion of forest. In 2016, mention two conditions required for the growth of littoral forest. It had come in 2019. In 2019, the following questions also had come. Briefly explain each of the following. The trees in the tropical desert forest have stunted growth. There is a gradual increase in the forest cover in recent times. The trees in monsoon deciduous forest shed their leaves for about six to eight weeks during March and April. Distinguish between agroforestry and social forestry which had come in 2014, very important question. Explain why the forest cover in India is shrinking. It has come in 2017. That's all for today. I hope you have understood my class. So see you in my next class with a new chapter. Till then, take care and bye-bye.